Hey, everybody. It's me, Evan Grant, your friendly neighborhood Rangers correspondent, back for another season of This Week in Rangers Baseball, y'all. We're going to talk this week a little bit about maybe not what the Rangers did this offseason, but what they didn't do. Uh, but first, hey, it's cold out. That's why I'm wearing my um, best lumberjack shirt and um, trying to imitate, what do you call it, Ben Napier from uh, hometown. My wife actually got this from their Laurel Mercantile store, so I'm very proud of it. Um, I hope everybody is warm and safe. Don't go outside if you don't need to. I just walked my dog. Uh, we didn't make it very far before I was terrifically afraid that I would slip and fall, and then we wouldn't have this weekend rangers baseball it would be hello from the hospital because if anybody can slip and do something bad to themselves it's me so on that note anyway so let's talk a little bit about what the rangers didn't do this offseason i think we all know that by and large the rangers attacked the starting pitching and as we get ready for spring training i i think the starting rotation is in better shape than it's been in a long time you know all about the guys they added, Jacob deGrom, Nathan Yavaldi, Andrew Heaney, Jacob Arizzi brought back Martin Perez, and obviously John Gray is there. Dane Dunning recovering from hip surgery and appears to be a, basically a full go. Uh, so the rotation is, is solid and deep, and that was the primary objective. But I want to talk about what will end up probably being, I think, the biggest on-field project and battle of spring training which is finding a left fielder and you go back to last august when the rangers made changes at general manager or made changes at the top of the baseball operations department and owner ray davis said he expected to bring in a middle of the order bat well the rangers have not all their pitching to this point has basically been all their additions to this point have basically been big league pitching uh, they did pursue michael conforto uh, he ended up signing with San Francisco on a two-year deal, very similar to what the Rangers offered, but he is from the West Coast, and perhaps he just decided that San Francisco and the Giants were a better fit for him than, than Texas was. Uh, when that didn't happen, it did open up the, the route to Uvalde, and the Rangers pounced on that, and so they were opportunistic. But as we sit here going to spring training, I'm looking at the left field options, and it's not a group of, of of proven there's not a let's put it this way there's not a identifiable solution at the moment um i think the rangers will proceed will pursue everything david peralta is still out there on the free agent market and i think he holds some attraction to the rangers though it's getting late um and i don't know how willing teams are right now to add more payroll to their to their uh, bottom line with the possibility that teams including the rangers may see uh no of none of their tv revenue from local broadcasting rights in the short term that's a story for another day it all goes back to your mess with bally's and sinclair and diamond sports uh we'll try and get into that here and in the newspaper at a later point but in the meantime, the possibility exists that, that come the end of February, early March, when teams are supposed to get their first payments uh, for broadcasting rights, the Rangers may not see that. And they have a, a significant local broadcasting package. So um, that could have an impact on how teams proceed. What the what, what the Rangers do have is, look, they'll go to camp with, with seven bodies, really, um, among the left field candidates. Uh, Brad Miller, Josh Smith. Joe McCarthy and Travis Jankowski, all from the left-hand side. They've got Bubba Thompson, Ezekiel Duran, and Jackson Frazier, who you used to know as Clint Frazier, uh, the former Uber prospect who uh, decided to be, go by Jackson last July uh, from the right-hand side. Uh, and, and so the obvious solution here would be to look for a, uh, a potential platoon situation. And... Uh, the easiest way to look at that would be, look, let's look at the most experienced of guys. From the left-hand side, Brad Miller was not effective last year. It's very clear he had um, a hip injury that, that 
that really impacted his performance all year and really took away from what he did well, which is crush right-handed pitching. Uh, you go back to his splits for the three years before coming to the Rangers. And this was a guy with a 5-12 slugging percentage against right-handed pitching. Granted, a couple of those years were played in Philadelphia in a, in a small ballpark, uh, but he had an 864 OPS uh, in in that in that time, 500, 514 at bats and 34 home runs. That's a solid season worth of at bats, a solid full season worth of at bats against just right-handers. You know, you pair that down to what you would face during the reg- during one regular season. That's productive. So the question is, can Brad Miller get that back? Um, the Rangers feel comfortable that that he will be better uh, health wise, and because of that, it should impact his performance on the field. You look at Frazier. Frazier's a right-handed hitter against lefties from seven from 2017 through 2020. He was an 818 OPS guy. Now, it wasn't a ton of at-bats. It was only about 200 at-bats uh, because he was constantly up and down in the Yankees organization. Um, the last two years, there's been a decided drop-off, uh, 204, 351, 280, and a 631 OPS against right against left-handed pitching. Uh, so there's clearly a reason why he was available on a minor league contract. Uh, clearly a reason why the Rangers were willing to take a chance to see if if Donnie Ecker and Tim Hires and Seth Connor can find what he was doing well in 2017 through 2020 and reinstill that um, as a platoon player. The second option would be, look, you know, Josh Smith and Ezekiel Duran uh, both have upside. Smith and, and both both showed some promising stretches last year as as rookies, um, jumping to the big leagues at, a, at an uh, accelerated pace. And again, you could you could potentially pair those guys up as a left-handed, right-handed uh, platoon. And in in all those cases, you have Bubba Thompson sitting there as a defensive as a late game defensive replacement, runner, um, multifaceted player who would also serve as your as your backup center fielder or potentially your starting center fielder if Leody Tavera struggled. So, uh, yeah, that that looks a little bit like a, a potential three-man um, platoon, which will be which will be interesting to try and accomplish. Uh, Joe McCarthy had a really good spring training with the Rangers last year, was last land cut uh, in a short camp, uh, went to Japan um, and came back. Travis Jankowski, who I know that at some point in time, if he makes the team, I will refer to as Sebastian, because once you've got the name Jankowski in your brain, uh, it always goes back to the Husky, former Raiders kicker. Uh, but this is another guy that, that Donnie Ecker views as a project that maybe he can unlock something from. Um, the idea would be to give these guys an opportunity to, to put together a platoon for the early part of the season. Um, so let's go through the idea that maybe you, you give those veterans the opportunity early if they struggle, then you maybe turn to a Smith Duran kind of uh, platoon, and you're also sitting there. You know, I, the Rangers had a um, prospect leadership camp last week in Arlington. Had eleven prospects in there, and it, you look around the field with those guys, and and everywhere you look, there are legitimate big league prospects. But one place um, where I was just looking was in, during, uh, three guys conversing over on the on the first base side were Dustin Harris. Evan Carter and Aaron Zavala, and you could make a case that those are three of the club's top six overall prospects, all outfielders, all with good strike zone command. Um, Smith and Zavala, I think, are considered above average. I, I'm sorry, Carter and Zavala are considered above average defensive players. Um, Smith is uh, Dustin Harris, I should say, not Dustin Smith. Dustin Harris has just made his. Um, moved to the outfield last year, the Rangers need to find a place for him because he can hit. Everything he hits, he hits hard. Um, talked to him a little bit. He said that, yeah, you know, making that transition early in the season and on the fly was was a challenge, but by the end of the year, he felt more comfortable. Um, he spent a lot of time this offseason, which he didn't do in, after the 2021 season, working on outfield reps and doing outfield work. And so he should go to camp and a longer camp with an opportunity 
to really um, hone his craft some and get an opportunity to work with the big league coaches since he's on the 40-man roster. Uh, Chris Young made it pretty clear that none of these guys, Carter, Harris, or Zavala, are real candidates for the opening day big league roster. But it's certainly a possibility that before the end of the year, one or more of these guys could get an opportunity. So, you know, you look at waves here. You look at the idea of let's see if if the two veterans can potentially give us a. Uh, if you're the Rangers, you say can the two Ranger can, can the two veterans give us a platoon with Bubba Thompson offering some defensive assists early. Um, if that doesn't work, then maybe you give Smith um, and Duran or Smith and Bubba Smith. Um, uh, or Bubba Thompson, Bubba Smith. God, my, I, I really am getting old. Uh, Bubba Thompson, the opportunity to kind of split that position. And then you're looking at later in the year, potentially the idea of one of these prospects. And I think if you're then going to spend capital um, on the trade deadline, then if, if this team is flirting with playoff contention, then it makes more sense to go out and spend the capital. I, I think going out right now and spending the capital on somebody like Brian Reynolds in terms of, of prospects, he's coming off a little bit of a down year. Uh, would like to see that he is the player that he appeared to be in 2021. Um, if he is, then there's no reason to not go out and trade from a deep farm system uh, and put together a package that might be attractive to Pittsburgh to acquire him. So I think there's multiple avenues that the Rangers can go through, can can um, proceed down uh, on this on this front. Uh, I don't know if any of the solutions appear really sexy at this point in time. Um, but the idea is to simply not have what the Rangers had last year in left field, which was negative a negative you know chris young called it a negative they were a minus 0. 0.8 uh in terms of uh war from the left field position which was the worst uh war for any group of left fielders for any team in the big leagues so the constant merry-go-round out there it was lacking in production um and it's something that the rangers need to work on but the bigger priority was pitching the Rangers attacked that. They were opportunistic there. And when the opportunity came to say, okay, do we proceed forward with a left fielder at all costs or use money to be opportunistic to further improve the pitching staff, the Rangers chose the latter. Now they'll spend spring training auditioning all these guys, seeing how this all fits together, and we'll go into the season that way. Uh, certainly, it's going to be something to watch. It's among a lot of things that we'll be watching going into camp. Uh, but I think this is the biggest single in-camp project that they've got to sort through. Uh, I will, as we get closer to spring training, uh, which begins on February 14th when pitchers and catchers report, uh, we will um, we will look at some other areas, both here in print and on the uh, Sports Day Insiders podcast. So everywhere that you want to um, you want to follow us, you can. You know where to find me on Twitter. Uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Um, and we will be around all year. Love to hear from you. If you've got email questions, don't hesitate to send them in to egrant at dallasnews.com. Uh, hopefully our fine producer, Demetrio Teniente, will be smarter than I was and flash our email address at the very beginning of this so that if you want to send me questions that you've got in particular uh, that you'd like to an have answered, send them along. Until next week, everybody, it's good to be back. So long. video.